Hi, my name is Petra. At the last video, Isa asked you what would happen if you excited the RC circuit with a sine wave. Well, um, I could answer the question right away, or I could force you to watch an experiment. Hmm, I'll wonder which option I'll choose. Let's roll the intro and I'll see you at the bench. Sorry to disappoint you. This is not actually the bench, it's just a screen recording. Off screen, I built a random RC circuit and wired it up. Do note that we set the probes 1 and 2 so that they have 1 to 10 attenuation ratio. Yellow trace is recording the middle node, while the green one is mirroring the signal generator. Trigger is set to trigger on second channel's positive edge. At the default settings, there is nothing to see. Signals are aligned and vertically offset a little bit. Call it a calibration mismatch. Adding another zero to the frequency doesn't really change much. But if I increase the frequency even more, you will notice that the yellow signal begins to lag behind the green one. At even higher frequencies, you will also notice that it begins to lose amplitude. What gives? Let's take the frequency even higher. See how the yellow signal stopped moving, but kept dying down? Hmm, curious. What if I swapped positions of resistor and capacitor? And we're back at the screen. Like before, signals are more or less matching. Let's move down the frequency a few steps and observe what happens. The same thing as before, just in reverse. You must have expected that, but did you notice? Now the green signal is lagging behind the yellow one. Ok, so from those two experiments we can make a conclusion that RC circuit blocks high frequencies and passes low frequencies. So we call it low pass filter. And the CR circuit blocks low frequencies and passes high frequencies. So that's why we call it, yeah, yeah, you know it, high pass filter. The lowest frequency you can get is zero hertz or constant value DC voltage. As you can see here, DC voltage can pass through capacitor symbol. AC voltage, on the other hand, can easily pass through it. Sorry, I just had to. Anyway, the real answer lies in impedance. Impedance consists of a resistance, which you already know, and reactance, which might be new to you, all measured in ohm. Total impedance is sum of resistance and reactance, though it's sometimes written as this equation, which better represents attenuation and phase shifting. Capacitor's reactance is calculated as this equation. While inductors have reactance according to this equation. This symbol is what mathematicians like to call the complex number i. In electrical engineering, i was already taken, so complex numbers are marked this way. But you didn't pay to hear the boring theory, did you? You didn't pay at all. Nevertheless, behold, here is an example. First, we'll take a look at amplitude response, for which we need absolute impedance. We can calculate it this way. Resistance is 100 ohm and reactance is about 16 mega ohms over hertz. Phase shift may be a bit more difficult to understand, but this equation is simpler. I could talk more about it, but let's not waste our time and move on. There is one specific frequency I would like to point out. 
It's called the corner frequency. Here, the signal drops by 3 decibels, that is to 1 over square root of 2 of original amplitude. Corner frequency for both low pass and high pass filters is the same. Phase shift for high pass filters is positive, attenuation is the same but flipped around. We use both plots to visualize filters characteristics. Before I show you what a boat plot is, I would like to show you how to set hardware for measurements because it's important. I'll do this experiment for RC circuit. Input 1 goes to output node. Input 2 attaches to the middle node. Both must have attenuation 1. Output 1 connects to input node, but this time you can't use an oscilloscope probe. Just plug a wire into output port or, if you have one, use an appropriate cable. What I have here is a 100 ohm, 10 nanofarad low pass filter. With that said, open Red Pitaya's boat analyzer app and immediately stop the measurement. Start frequency is 1 kHz and end frequency can be 1 MHz. And let's make 250 steps. Hit run and let Red Pitaya do its magic. It's gonna take some time to finish. So um, I could tell you a joke or I could tell my editor to speed up. And here it is, measurement is done. Now I'll add the cursor at minus three decibels, another one where the first one intersected the amplitude line and the third one where the second one intersected the phase line. In an ideal world, frequency cursor would show 195 kHz, which is corner frequency, and one on the face would sit as minus 45 degrees. This, as you can see, is not an ideal world. Not to waste any more time, I will swap resistor and capacitor once again and repeat the boat analysis. Hit run and skip ahead. Frequency cursor shouldn't move by much and phase should be at around 45 degrees. Once again, reality messes with my script. Conclusion is that this demo could have gone better. The second conclusion is that I should investigate the source of error, but the purpose of this video isn't to make a correct measurement, but to show you how to do it. The third conclusion is that this video is getting pretty long, but I really want to squeeze in a band pass filter. Wiring high pass and low pass in series creates a band pass filter. One thing you have to consider is to make sure to set low pass corner frequency above high pass or you will create a nothing pass filter. Let's run the boat analyzer one last time and quickly set the cursors. I'm not telling you what components values I used because you can easily reverse engineer those values by knowing the corner frequencies though you might have caught my bluff. I set the frequencies to be what they were supposed to be, without even attempting to measure them. In reality, it is seldom possible to measure corner frequencies of bandpass filters due to filter overlaps. Now you know. All topics covered. You still have to do the outro. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, of course, of course, of course. <sighs> well, uh, I know this video packed quite a lot of information to ingest, but uh, I hope you learned something. I encourage you to take a look at the documentation where you can find additional information. Anyway, like, share, subscribe and bye-bye! Uh, <laughs>